Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Startup Jungle. I'm your host, Los Silva, and today with me, I have Mateo Casese. At Mateo C is his Twitter handle. We will have all that on the show notes later on. But Mateo, how are you, man? I am great. Thanks, you. Thanks a lot for having me on the podcast. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for being on. So, so Mateo, you are a consultant, uh, entrepreneur, consultant to startups and companies, innovator. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about exactly um, what you do right now and what you're focusing on? So what I focus on is basically two things, uh, and when I'm lucky, they come together, and the two things are uh, ideas and people. Uh, I fortunately uh, encounter some extraordinary people uh, in my current um, uh, base town that is Berlin, uh, and sometimes these people bring some ideas, sometimes I'm the one bringing the ideas, and when the two uh, things start to work together, uh, then a few uh, a few things start to happen and um, I bring this approach um, when I encounter just individuals and uh, the outcome can be uh, just to consult them or uh, to build a startup together and I try to use exactly the same approach when I'm talking to bigger companies uh, because I think that also bigger companies just need a, a fresh approach uh, to ideas then, you know, ideas alone uh, have a hard time. Uh, so uh, um, I, I like to use all the most uh, current tools and frameworks uh, that I can find um, in order to uh, organize these ideas and transform them in opportunities uh, and transform them in uh, sometimes small businesses. So uh, businesses that have no, uh, no fear of, of being small and uh, maybe remaining small or having um, uh, a scale that is not the scale of the of the unicorns. It's the scale of um, of sustainability and um, and it's the scale of uh, you know managing uh, your own life, your private life, and your work life. Yeah, there's there's a lot of you know hype and talk in in online in general on just scale and growth and massiveness, but ninety percent of the world just wants to do a little bit better you know what I mean not everyone's looking to get acquired by IBM and do all these massive massive acquisition type things they just want to kind of build a company that's sustainable that scales at their own pace and that can deliver them a great lifestyle yes this is absolutely true and and also not maybe sometimes you have a year or two years in your life where you wish to have that kind of speed and that kind of scale uh, and then you also want something that you can slow down yeah. and um, it, it can happen that um, that you are losing some opportunities when you are not available to this huge uh, possibility of growth uh, but at the same time if you can maintain control of what you are doing um, especially um, in some in some areas it's also important to maintain the financial control of of what you're doing then you can say you know this year my projects is um, is like one of my co-founders uh, he's building a house this year mm -hmm. so that's basically uh, half of what the company has to do is being involved in building the house and this is totally fine so uh, the, this the is, company is building the house or he is building his own house and the company's kinda involved in it just because it kinda flows that way it, the, the company is involved because uh, it, he's the he's the mind of the company. So um, if his mind is on, set on uh, on having a, a super eco-friendly, efficient, uh, passive house, uh, then you know maybe some projects won't get done uh, um, a lot during this year, and it's totally totally fine. Yeah, yeah. So I was looking through your website, and um, I found that you're you're doing a lot of workshops, and um, you're kind of getting into doing a lot of digital uh, marketing courses and stuff as well and one of them I kind of wanted to talk about was uh, Presentation Hero. Can you talk a little bit about the the essence of Presentation Hero and kind of like the 10 steps that you that you mentioned in that presentation? Right, so Presentation Hero is my try to uh, add a little bit of value in the area of uh, presentation skills and presentation training and uh, all the valuable work uh, that has been done by some great professionals uh, like Nancy Duarte at Duarte or uh, Gar Reynolds at Presentation Zen. Uh, 
and I started um, like most of the um, most of the uh, other people in this space uh, by going back to the essence of story and how we relate to content and uh, we relate to content through uh, through narrative uh, and um, and try to digest this uh, um, this big concept because if you if you enter a boardroom and you start talking about story you don't always get the best uh, best response um, and so I'm trying to distill from the, um, the the great principles of story which are very complex and uh, you can use a myth, you can use uh, movies to uh, get some examples of those, uh, but to distill them in, in actionable, simple uh, tips, sometimes just simple tips, sometimes also bigger principles, but that also can be applied in a very simple manner. Uh, and uh, I'm really in the process of um, of debuting uh, this uh, um, this new methodology uh, to the internet, and uh, I've had um, a great experience by sharing uh, the first ten tips that are all about uh, structuring a presentation. So structuring your thought and structuring the presentation. Um, and I plan on going on to deliver uh, some more tips in the area of designing the presentation. So when you have to deal also with uh, with the presentation software and um, how to approach that and when to start opening your PowerPoint or your keynote and a third and uh, really important part is presentation delivery so what do you do when you are uh, actually in the room what what are the do's and um, and a lot of uh, of the don'ts really that maybe that's uh, that's even the most important part and the what's different about presentation hero is that it's really not geared towards anyone in sp in particular uh, and it doesn't want to change the style of anyone uh, I'm a great lover of bad presentations uh, I'm a huge lover of great presentations as well but uh, I like how uh, bad presentation can be personal and um, I I've seen a lot of presentation training that uh, goes in the direction of making everyone super confident, everyone applying uh, some uh, body tricks, some posture, some kind of uh, voice delivery that is effective, is, uh, uh, drives uh, successful presentations. And it's not only that, it's not, that is not for everyone. Uh, and um, I think the presentation training is something that needs to be done from the mailroom up to the CEO and it's not just for the sales department I'm trying to um, to make it uh, something that can be relatable for uh, really for everyone yeah it, it, it was really great and I noticed actually uh, in the presentation about presentations that you did um, and we'll link up to that because it's uh, it's available on your website and on YouTube as well but I noticed that your tone was uh, different. It was slowed down. It was very specific. Um, I, I noticed just the way you were uh, switching over to slides and, and things like that. And it, it kept me, I didn't even realize it, but it kept me in, involved. I actually watched it like two, three times, and it's only nine minutes long, but it kept me intrigued to, to like stay inside of the presentation that you were giving. Um, we deal with a lot of people who are freelancers and they do e-commerce all the way to software as a service companies and a lot of a lot of things that they go out and do is they sell through webinars which is essentially you know online live uh, presentations what are some actionable tips uh, tips and strategies that you could you could give our our group to kind of um, create better presentations and kind of I would say uh, because I saw in your presentation that you're you're also a big fan of this blend in story own personal and business story inside of the presentation to create something that keeps you engaged and at the same time essentially sells you something right the the first thing that it's really important when you're doing something online also if you're doing something in, in a physical space but online it's really really important is to give your audience a sense of control mm -hmm. so you are clearly controlling the space you're controlling the stage you're controlling the visuals you're controlling the audio uh, but if you give your audience um, just the basic information at the beginning you know this webinar will last 35 minutes during this webinar we'll cover this and this and this 
And this is already something that puts your audience at ease and they, they, they can mentally relax and they say, okay, I have this 35 minutes, I'm going to devote it to this. The other thing that you really need to do at the beginning um, is to establish yourself as, as a human being. And if you do that, uh, you get a huge advantage because you are, from that point, you are a relatable person and you are not just the voice from a technological artifact and uh, you're not just the voice behind some slides that um, appear from a screen sharing um, software. And you can, uh, when you introduce yourself, you can also explain why you're doing it. You know, why are you um, passionate about the topic? Why, um, why is it it's so important for you to do a webinar? In that moment of time, what has happened in your life recently that reinforces some of the messages that you're going you're gonna to deliver? If you do that, you can kind of get the attention of your audience from the first bit, and you can... Um, at that point, you have to start delivering something. So what you deliver um, should be in the form of a story, as you said. And uh, what, how do you structure a story? So it's not about um, some funny anecdotes or being witty or um, having a story about your childhood. Um, it's about establishing uh, where you're going to bring your audience to. So establish a, a starting point, like we don't know nothing about topic X or we are just at this level and an ending point that it should be a dramatical change from the beginning um, either in perspective in amount of knowledge uh, in uh, emotion it can be any type of change it doesn't need to be just content 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 just you know you're not trying to, um, to push Wikipedia to your audience um, it once you establish that you have to construct the way that you're going to bring um, your audience from uh, from the starting point to the ending point, and you do that um, uh, through um, showing what is is going to be uh, what's going to happen at the end, and then going back to what is happening in the moment, and uh, and going back and forth from these uh, these two states, and what you can do at towards the end, and it's really important, is that the story needs to have a, a peak, a high point. An aha uh -huh moment. moment. Yeah. And um, this is not a trick. You know, it's not just that uh, it's better if you have a high point, and it's, uh, but it's okay if you don't. Uh, because it really is something that uh, connects the dots for, for your audience. And um, since the, your, your high point is towards the end of your presentation, it also um, eases your audience into understanding that that is the most important bit of information and then from that moment they can start to relax and ease back to their life uh, and your presentation is about to end. So um, this really summarizes uh, uh, the approach and there are so many layers and you can go inside each of these um, elements and each of these items um, with a lot a lot more depth yeah what what about um, I, I really I really agree with you on the uh, on the aha moment I, I think a lot of people just run through a presentation especially more on the corporate and um, side of things they just kind of go through these are things you need to learn very robotic and there's there's no connection between people there's no there's no story that can kind of put something in my head saying, oh, I can relate to this or I can kind of see how this helps me in my business or in my life and um, then it just keeps going with content and, and, and then it ends. There's no real climax, there's no real story, there's no real connection and I think when you're doing a presentation online or offline, the immediate point that you need to focus on is how can I, whatever I'm selling, whatever I'm presenting on, how can I make that connect to you? How can I make that important? inside of, of your circle and of your life and your situation, right? Because that's how you reach the aha moment. That's how you reach the, when you're leaving, someone wanting to say, well, what else is there? How can I learn more? What's the next step, right? Absolutely. And you cannot do that um, if you stay inside your space and if you stay inside your mind. Uh, the solution to relating to to your audience is actually to do uh, a kind of uh, Jedi trick 
to transfer your consciousness to the consciousness of your audience and try to understand how they feel. Like, for instance, you may go on uh, through your presentation using your own lingo and using your um, three-letter acronyms from your, uh, maybe from your marketing or from your specific industry, and nobody understands those. So, and what happens when you don't understand? As an audience member, you disconnect. You go back to your thoughts. You go back to your own mind. Um, so if you uh, are able to do this exercise, let's say that you have terrible slides, you don't, um, you haven't thought about the structure of your presentation, you haven't uh, done you know, any, um, any polish, you don't have good visuals, etc. But if you're able just to focus on your audience, you already are halfway to, uh, to giving a great presentation because uh, you will know uh, where to spend more time, where to spend less time. And as you said, to, um, to focus on what you can give. Uh, and to focus on, on what what is um, needed by your audience, and to focus on what what you can um, show them. Obviously, you're not going to give you give give your audience all of uh, of the benefits you can provide. Maybe you want to sell some of those benefits. Maybe those benefits can come only through time. Uh, but if you show them at least one, uh, you will leave them uh, wanting more. So I wanted to ask you this. Um, I see a lot of people that have problems and trouble and I think it's the most overwhelming part of creating presentations and that is the slide structuring. I know I know that even I have a hard time wanting to create a presentation. Then you get into slides and you get into all that. It, just, it, it can get a little overwhelming so do you have any tips or tricks on how many slides or how, how do you go about it? I, I noticed that you only had a few slides on, uh, on your presentation and they were still very impactful. Uh, I think a lot of people go through the m mistake of creating 300 a uh, 300 slide deck for a 20 minute 30 minute you know thing and they just slide through it and personally I think that takes away from the engagement and the conversation that you're having with people so I kind of tend to go a little bit slower and lower on the slides and more conversational but I'm not sure which one is right or wrong uh, well, the conversational approach, for sure, um, since it involves directly your audience, it, it's uh, is the right one to capture them. Um, then, uh, obviously, the conversation uh, eats away from the structure because sometimes you want to go in one direction and your audience drives you to another one. But if your audience is driving, that's great uh, because you, you actually engage them. So uh, your um, your problem in, in a way is solved. Uh, when you find yourself in a more formal kind of setting where you cannot start uh, this kind of conversation, it's really important that your, um, uh, first of all, that your deck has the right structure, so you have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and, and this is crucial, so towards the end you have to have a high point, at the beginning you have to have uh, at least an amount of introduction that, that gives your audience an idea of why you're talking. If they don't know why you're talking, it's really it's a tragedy because um, maybe some of them know about you and maybe some of them by the end of your presentation they will understand that you are the major expert on that topic but if you don't tell beforehand you know hey I'm the, I'm the one that you have to listen to uh, when it when it comes to this topic it, you're just losing an opportunity and um, in terms of, of how to go by um, uh, with with the number of slides and uh, what slides have to go where? Um, you have to um, you have to rehearse a lot so that you know how my, how your timing is working. And the trick that I use is actually that I uh, arrive at the at opening uh, my presentation software only when I have the exact number of slides that I want to do. I open it only when I have the text that goes into the slides done in a text editor. So I don't have I don't do slides at the beginning. I just if I have some text that I want on the slides, I put it on a, on a text editor um, as it is. And um, after you've sketched the slides, and I do sketch the slides on my iPad with uh, sketching software, so with uh, with a little pen, or just on on A4 paper, um, mm. which is fantastic. And um, when you have uh, pieces of paper, it's really easy to, to look at a piece of paper and say, oh, useless. And then you crumple it and you throw it away. If you, you spend half an hour on a slide 
and you know it looks great it has that diagram where you connected all the dots etc it's much harder to get rid of it but the creative process is getting rid of stuff it's not really uh, a lot about only about creating stuff it's also about cleaning and um, getting to the essence and uh, you know another another thing is is even to um, uh, to try to rewrite so even the presentation text treat it like it's copy and it tra treat it like it's copy that is not going on your website it's going on print and it's not even going on print on a uh, on a, a daily newspaper it's going on a monthly so uh, treat it like something that you want to be as round and as polished as possible um, and and all those uh, all those tricks can can lead you to um, having a better structure and um, if you're able to cut a lot, then then also you can um, you can achieve this kind of uh, of clarity uh, and of um, a synthesis that that's that's great in in the greatest presentation. You can, you can notice that there's nothing more than than is needed, there's nothing missing, but there's nothing uh, that is too much. Yeah, I think creating too much just adds a sense of overwhelm to the people listening and, and it just takes away and so creating something that's simple and I really like the the extra topic that you mentioned where think about it as like you're writing copy I, I, I feel like too many people try to create presentations that are just very quick and just written off um, if you kind of test mentally and kind of even test within um, before you even have the presentation test headlines and test kind of how you're going to create the headline maybe as a slide and, and different things like that it'll add a lot of uh, little details like that add a significant amount of impact into people's presentations yeah and one thing is that you, you what I what I always think about doing a presentation is um, I think about doing the second the third the fourth or the uh, hundredth time so I think of the of the process of refining it and I think that the first time I'm going to give it, it's not going to be perfect, etc. But I, I, I start thinking about um, a, pro um, a project uh, that uh, may potentially follow me for many months to come. So uh, it's not something that I would ever do the night before uh, and just with uh, um, with very little time. I always de devote uh, the right amount of time to it um, to to make sure that. Um, I start building something, even though maybe that presentation will be held, you know, just one time. It's just for one client, and it's a, it's a, it's a one-off. Yeah, yeah, de definitely. Giving giving something like that time is is extremely important. Um, not not just going by quickly with it, because a lot of them can be one-offs. But um, you know, for for marketers and for people selling things online, um, you can you can just keep tweaking that presentation. You know, for example, if you're selling anything on e-commerce and anything SaaS related just really tweaking and honing in that presentation the more presentations you do the more you can kind of start to understand uh, your buyer your buyers persona and exactly what they want delivered to them absolutely well, great Mateo this has been really good this is uh, this has actually been great I want to uh, make sure that everybody who wants to reach you out uh, reach out to you can do so not only through Twitter, which is uh, at Mateo C, uh, but what is your website and where's the best place that people can reach out to you? So my website uh, has also a complicated name because it's called La Fabrica della Realtà, which means uh, the factory of reality, and that's where uh, you find all my projects and you can find there. Uh, also presentation hero uh, and I guess the, the best way to reach out um, to me is uh, Twitter um, for interaction purposes um, and uh, if you just uh, if you just google my name Matteo Cassese you can find uh, you can find my blog and I blog ab about too many topics uh, at the moment and um, uh, and I'm focusing on, on so many different projects uh, that I think you can uh, you can easily get a little bit lost on my on my blog, but it's not about um, that's my free space of uh, of just uh, thought. So um, there I'm playing uh, with uh, concepts of identity, with uh, a video, with uh, uh, applying education to corporations and uh, uh, corporate culture and uh, and all the like. And I think that's that is the best way to uh, to get to know me, to get to understand 
a little bit more of my approach, and um, uh, and then uh, there is always the possibility to jump in and get in contact with me at any point. Well, thank you. This has been great. And guys, uh, once again, um, at Matteo C for Twitter. I will have everything else on the show notes. If you guys want to reach us, as always, it is at Startup Jungle on Twitter. Um, please make sure that you subscribe to our growth hacking strategies and make sure you are on our email list over here to the right, um, which will have all the growth hacking strategies and details on our upcoming blogs. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave us a review. We appreciate it very much. And uh, we will have more episodes like this coming up shortly. Um, that's it for us, guys. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon.